I have dreamed about space ever since I was a little kid. My dad introduced me to science fiction when I was very little. It's hard to pin it to a specific thing. I think a lot of it came down to it being hard and interesting. And then I immediately started having dreams of what we could do in space. When we first started the Commercial Space Flight Federation, it was with just this handful of companies. I had this bird's eye view of everything that was happening in this new industry. At Planet, it was super unique. It was very much a, let's go build the things and launch them and really use space as a test bed. Traditionally, you go do crazy amounts of testing, whereas Planet took the approach of, let's make the spacecraft very inexpensive and test it up there. I got to see every new company that was being worked on, every new technology, and there was a missing piece. And that missing piece is what we are doing today at Astronus. Small satellites for higher orbits, starting with geostationary orbit. Yeah, so four billion people don't have the ability to access broadband internet. A whole bunch of, of people and communities are essentially being left behind with that. Internet has become essentially a utility. It is what enables people to be everything that they can and, and learn things and, and connect with people and share and stuff like that. Pretty sad to hear that a lot of people just don't have these you know basic basic things having affordable access to reliable broadband internet changes people's lives we'll see people get online for the very first time and they will be able to educate themselves and it's going to have a huge impact across the world the reason that there's been insufficient access for those people is just that satellite internet historically has been much more expensive the reason no one has ever done this before with small satellites in geo is because it is hard there are a huge array of challenges going from low Earth orbit up to higher orbits like GEO. The reason that we go to this much farther distance and harsher environment is that you're in this very unique position such that you revolve around the Earth at the same rate that the Earth rotates. When you're on the ground and you're looking up at our spacecraft, it does not appear to be moving in the sky. It seemed very counterintuitive that no one would go after this large existing market using a new approach so we can do it faster, better, and cheaper. A lot of it's speed, just being able to do something faster than the ability to sort of quantize your spacecraft down to something smaller, thereby enabling you to not have these sort of too big to fail systems. We are building these satellites faster, at lower cost, and with more flexibility than anybody has ever built them before. The idea of connecting 4 billion people to broadband internet is extremely exciting. You know, our mission is to be connecting people that are not connected. The reason they're not connected is because of price point. You need the simplest system possible in order to deploy this to all these different people. How can it be true that we are still launching only analog satellites into space? Why is infrastructure so expensive in developing countries? Why is satellite bandwidth so expensive? Why is fiber so expensive? How can it be true that we still have 4 billion people that are not connected to the internet? So all of this left us with the question of how can we connect these 4 billion people? We immediately asked ourselves, how quickly could we build a prototype satellite and launch it into space?